All right, hello, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be talking about limits that involve infinity and asymptote. So we're going to start our discussion right now with a consideration of the graph of y equals 1 over x. Okay, so I know that you know what that graph looks like. I know that 1 over 1 is 1. I'll label 2 and 4 on this graph and start, you know, start plotting y equals 1 over x. You know, obviously this is not going to be the best graph of all time, but it'll be just fine, especially for our purposes here. All right, and so I'm going to, I've plotted my points, I'm going to connect the dots, and I'm going to talk to you about the asymptotes and the corresponding limits. Okay, not the best one I've ever drawn, but definitely not the worst either. So, we're going to say that as far as asymptotes go, okay, there is a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Okay. We can see that the farther we go to the right, it looks like that line is a that line is an asymptote to the, to the graph of one over x. So I'm going to say the horizontal asymptote is y equals zero, and the vertical asymptote is going to be the y-axis, which is the line x equals zero. Now, I want to show you what we're going to be doing here today. We're going to be talking about the exact same thing as, you know, you may have learned about before, except we're going to use limits instead of, you know, asymptote language. So, I'm going to start, you know, saying that for the horizontal asymptote, what I'm also saying is that the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x is equal to 0. I'm saying, and I haven't really defined what I mean by the limit as x goes to infinity yet, and I'll give you that just in a second right below here. But for now, I think you can see what I'm saying is that as x goes to infinity, 1 over x is going towards 0. And in a certain sense, that's pretty much what you need to know, is that this limit as x goes to infinity, it's just like, what am I getting closer and closer to the bigger x gets? Now, for the vertical asymptote, I could say... That it sure seems like the limit as x approaches 0 from the positive side of 1 over x is equal to positive infinity. And we will be able to say that, you know, once we define what these things mean. I just wanted to point out just immediately, right at the beginning, that a limit as x goes to infinity equaling 0, this is corresponding to the y equals 0 horizontal asymptote, right? This is, right, the same thing. The limit is the y value. You may have heard me say last time. And then the vertical asymptote, hold on just a second. Vertical asymptote x equals 0 is where as x is approaching 0 from the positive side, we get, you know, this equals infinity. Okay, so let's talk about what do I mean really when I say that the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals. All right, so let's define what we mean. Let's say that the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x is equal to L if basically, well, first things first, I need to tell you that when you see these instructions, you're thinking, if you're very fluent, your horizontal asymptote rules might be screwed that down a little. Uh, you're thinking horizontal asymptotes. They're the same thing. And so, in general, what that means is that, you know, if I've got, you know, this horizontal asymptote that I'm approaching, that the bigger that x gets, the closer f of x gets to L, right? That's what you need to know. But I should, I am, I feel obligated to give you, you know, a more technical definition of the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals L. Hmm. And what this is basically saying is that we can get f of x as close to L as we like just by taking sufficiently large x values. Okay. Now, to go back up here to talk about our graph of 1 over x, I can get 1 over x to be as close to 0 as I like just by taking large enough x values. That actually makes a lot of sense. If I want 1 over x to be less than 0.01, then I take x bigger than 100. Okay, and so on. If I want it to be less than one one millionth, I just choose x bigger than one million. Okay. Okay. And then the limit equals infinity 
We'll say that if basically, you know, we're looking at a vertical asymptote type situation like that, or, you know, more formally, that's what we mean here is that basically we can make f of x as large as we like for any m greater than zero. If I want it bigger than a thousand, there's some amount of closeness that if I'm just that close to x equals c, then I can guarantee myself I'll be above that above that threshold. So to bring this back to the example up here, if I want 1 over x to be bigger than 2, I choose x, you know, within a half of 0. If I want 1 over x bigger than 10, I had better choose x within one-tenth of 0, right? And so on. I can make this as big as I want by choosing values of x that are sufficiently close to 0. All right, next in class, I, we sketched the graph of y equals arctangent x. And while that's definitely good, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a picture of it for you. While reminding you that the important points of, on the graph of y equals arctangent of x, are, it goes to the origin because tangent of 0 is 0. At 1, arctangent of 1 is pi over 4. And there's horizontal asymptotes on the graph of y equals arctangent of x at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. Okay, Which means that the limit as x approaches infinity of arc tangent of x is equal to pi over 2. And the limit as x approaches negative infinity of arc tangent of x is equal to negative pi over 2. Okay, and this has to do with, you know, like unit circle considerations and, you know, tangent being y divided by x on the unit circle and the closer you get it to pi over 2 on the unit circle, the closer you are to dividing by 0. But, uh, you know, these are just a couple of facts. All right, now let's talk about some algebraic limits. Okay, now I might should have uh, mentioned this in the first video, you know, when we were just talking about limits in general. But the number one rule of limits, especially in AP calculus, is like, you see a limit, the first thing you want to try to do is just plug it. Okay, sometimes that ends up working. Okay, like, for instance, in 2019 on the free response, and then they came to me afterwards and they're like, man, I think I messed up the limit question. It seemed too easy. Okay, now, they didn't tell you that g of 1 equal 2 on that ver on the actual version of the free response question. Uh, you had to do some calculus to figure that out. But you, don't, you aren't there yet. But other than that, all you did was this equaled 10 to the 1, 10 to the first power, minus 3 times g of 1 is 2, divided by f, the limit of f as x approaches 1 is equal to 1, minus inverse tangent of 1. Okay, I need you to know that's pi over 4. And you just you could stop there, and that was that was the correct answer. I did not grade. I did not grade AP calculus in 2019, but I did grade in 2020 when everyone took it at home, and I graded a problem that had a limit like this, and everyone did the wrong thing because later on in the course you're going to learn this other technique to deal with limits, but it only works if you start off with zero over zero. So you've got to always plug in first and and see what you're going to get back. This is going to be 4 divided by 1 minus pi over 4, which I don't know what that number is, but uh, I know that it's not 0 over 0. Okay? So every once in a while, you know, you just plug it in, and that's, that's the thing to do in this class. Usually it'll require an extra step, though. All right, now I'm back to the infinity, negative infinity thing. Um, talking about relative growth rates of different types of functions. Okay. Now, you may have seen this before in pre-calculus or algebra 2 or whatever, but that was usually when you had polynomial on top and polynomial on bottom. Now, we're going to be putting different types of functions, you know, of, and comparing them. So, I'm going to start with the taxonomy of growth rates. So, I'm going to really only talk about three categories of functions, and, you know, I'm sure there's others out there, but we're not going to really need to, need to talk about those in, in AP calculus. And at the top, the fastest growing is exponential.
Now, within the realm of exponential functions, 10 to the x will definitely grow faster than 2 to the x. Okay? And oftentimes, I'm going to be depending on your own intuition on things like that. But below exponential, we have algebraic functions. Okay. Now, I would say polynomial, but I want to expand beyond just, you know, whole number powers of x uh, to include possible, like, you know, square root of x or other fractional powers of x. Within the realm of algebraic functions, x to the 10 is going to grow faster than x to the 2, which is going to grow faster than the square root of x. And just to remind you, the square root of x is x to the 1 half power. Don't forget that. Okay. But, and then slowest of all is going to be logarithmic functions. But the nice thing about logarithmic functions is you don't need to really worry about, you know, within these things, logarithmic functions. Because, like I may have told you already in class, the only log I care about in AP Calculus is natural log. Not going to deal with base 2 log or base 10 log. I'll let those go for, you know, your science class or whatever. In this class, all we care about is natural log. Okay, and then, in, and you may have remembered this from pre-calculus, from algebra 2, but if it's heavier on bottom or bigger on bottom or faster on bottom, this limit is going to zero. Okay, if it's bigger on top or heavier on top, faster on top, whatever you want to call it, then that limit is going to go to, right, and these are limits as x approaches infinity, right? going to go to positive infinity or it might go to negative infinity if it's bigger on top. But it's not going to go to a, a finite number. Whoops. Okay, that's just barely still in my shot. And if they're essentially the same, it's going to go to the ratio of the leading coefficients. And I feel like I need to probably write down an example for that. So, right, so in the past, you know, you algebra two or whatever, you saw this type of rational function. You were asked about the horizontal asymptotes of it. Okay, and what you did was you kind of like identified the highest power on top and bottom. Okay, if it was the same, we we're going to divide the rate, you know, the leading coefficients. This is one x to the fourth divided by negative five x to the fourth. This is equal to this limit is one over negative five. Now, if you were not, like, if you didn't understand why you could only regard the, you know, the highest power, you didn't understand why that was true in, in your previous class, let me, let me just show you right now. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply by a clever form of 1. I'm going to multiply by 1 over x to the 4 divided by 1 over x to the 4. Okay? And this becomes the limit as x approaches infinity of x to the 4 divided by x to the 4 is 1. Well, that's weird. Plus 3x squared over x to the 4 is 3 over x squared plus 1 over x to the 4. Okay, and then down here I'll have 1 over x to the 3rd minus 5. Now as x goes to infinity... This fraction and this fraction and that fraction are all bigger on bottom and they're going towards zero, right? The bigger x gets, the smaller each of those fractions get. So I get this limit, which is going to be 1 plus 0 plus 0, divided by 0 minus 5. And that's why we can just disregard the lower power terms there. I just wanted to show you that just right now so that you know why we're going to do that. Because I'm going to just disregard lower power terms later on, maybe even in this video. So there that is. And coming back to here, this is that was what I meant by the ratio of the leading coefficients. Okay. Now, I do need to point out that there are some functions that just don't grow at all, like, you know, constants, y equals a constant, like y equals 1. Something like y equals the sine of x or y equals cosine of x. These are both functions that don't grow. And I don't really remember why when I put this on my notes, why I put this on the notes, but I think just to say that if you run into, you know, sine or cosine in a limit going to infinity situation where we're comparing on a fraction, those they can be treated like a constant because they don't grow at all. Now, lastly, I'm going to go over here and talk to you about E and natural log. Oh, hold on just a second. Let's get that up. 
right. What you need to know is that E is a number between 2 and 3. That's what you really, really need to know for this AP Calculus class. But I feel like I would be remiss to not at least notify you of the definition of E. All right. In this class, we're going to define it in terms of a limit. But, you know, you don't really need to know that unless you're going to be the type of person that's going to be interested in the proof of all of the different rules involving exponential functions. You know, the slopes of them, the areas underneath them, all of that stuff. You know, if you're going to be interested in the proof of, you know, these rules that are coming your way, you're going to need to understand that the definition of E is this limit. But that's, I'm going to just leave it at that. Okay, and then our definition of natural log is the special exponent definition, right? We don't need to do anything fancy in here. We're going to say natural log of X is the value of Y... where e to the y equals x. It's the special exponent that I put on e to get x. So, for example, the, you know, the logs that we need to know in this class, let's say really quickly, okay, we need to know the natural log of 1. What's the special exponent that I put on e to get 1? That's the 0 exponent. Okay, log of e. What's the special exponent I put on e to get e? I put the 1 exponent on. Okay, what about e to the 5? What exponent do I put on e to get e to the 5? I don't even say it's special, it's just 5, right? And then I've got a couple of more. What exponent do I put on e to get the square root of e? That would be the 1 half exponent. And then the log of 1 over e. What exponent do I put on e to get 1 over e? That would be the negative 1 exponent. Okay. Those are the values of log that you need to know in this class, I feel like. And, you know, replace 5 with some other whole number. You'll, you'll need to know that, too. All right. Now let's do some old-fashioned examples. Okay. So first, these compute the limit. You see x approaching infinity. Oh, wait, hold on. That's a typo, right? You can't take the limit as x approaches negative infinity of anything involving a natural log. That wouldn't make sense. Okay. So I'm going to say that's x approaching infinity. Okay. But we see x approaches infinity. We're thinking, is it bigger on top or bigger on bottom, right? Okay, this one right here, this is bigger on bottom, so I'm going to say that that limit is equal to zero. Okay, this one is bigger on top, so I know that it's going to either be positive infinity or negative infinity. I just have to figure out which it is. Well, I, you know, x approaches infinity, that's a large positive number. Well, infinity is not a number, but, you know, we're... As we're putting in larger and larger positive numbers, x to the third is going to be a positive number. Divided by natural log, what is what kind of special exponent do I put, need to put on e to get a really large positive number? And it's going to be another large positive exponent, right? And so since I have positive over positive, that's going to be a positive number. And I know that this is going to either positive infinity or negative infinity, so I conclude that this limit is positive infinity. Now, as x approaches infinity, okay, I'm seeing a mix. So I figure out what is the most powerful on, you know, top and bottom. Here I'm seeing an e to the x, which I know is stronger than 4x squared. And then I'm seeing a negative e to the x. So this one, I'm going to, I see they're essentially the same. So I'm going to divide the leading coefficients, the coefficient against the highest power, the strongest thing, which is that e to the x. So that's going to be, that has a 1 exponent, and this has a negative 1 exponent. So that's negative 1. Okay. All right. I think now I'm going to want to bring, yeah, I want to bring this one up right next to the other one, yeah, to talk about this one, because this looks very similar, but the result is going to be very, very different as we approach negative infinity. So right now, I need to remind you of what the graph of y equals e to the x looks like. Okay. That looks like that. And as x approaches negative infinity, e to the x uh, approaches 0. Okay. And if you think about what happens when you put in a large negative number into e to the x, well, you know, you're a negative exponent of e becomes 1 over e to the positive version of that exponent. And so you have a large exponent in a denominator, very heavy denominator, and it makes sense that it would go to 0, right? I think it's probably a little more obvious, or I'd like, would be less surprising to people 
if I said this, e to the negative x, that that limit is zero as we approach positive infinity because a lot of people, when they see e to the negative x, they think 1 over e to the x. Okay? So that wouldn't be a surprise, but this is the same limit, talking about the same thing. But over here, as x approaches negative infinity, this e to the x is going to go to zero, right? Because we're approaching negative infinity, and so is that one. That one's also going to go to zero. And so I'm left with a 4x squared divided by 3x squared, which are essentially the same, and so I'm going to divide the leading coefficients. And that's going to be 4 divided by 3. Okay. And I think and I'm just going to say, oh, hold on. No, I did have something to say about that. There's this connection between horizontal asymptotes and limits involving infinity. Okay. Well, I've got two different limits, right? As, as we approach x, as x approaches infinity, this fraction, e to the x plus 4x squared divided by 3x squared minus e to the x approaches negative 1. But as we approach negative infinity, it approaches 4 thirds, which tells me that, you know, hold on just a second. It tells me that the function f of x equals e to the x plus 4x squared divided by 3x squared minus e to the x has horizontal asymptotes at y equals negative 1 and y equals 4 thirds. Okay. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Already seen one. We saw that arctangent has dual horizontal asymptotes. We just saw another one. There's going to be another one a little bit later on. Okay, here's two more examples. Okay, and I think this is the one that I was getting at earlier when I was talking about functions that don't grow, right? Sine of x, as x goes to infinity, that limit doesn't exist. I already mentioned that once in this class. Um, but compared with x, you know, this is definitely bigger on bottom. That one grows, but sine of x is locked in between negative 1 and 1. So we're going to have a really big denominator and a relatively small numerator. So that limit is going to come back 0. Okay. Now this here, we'll see, you'll see that uh, x is approaching non-infinity. So I might try just plugging in. You never know. Maybe I made a typing error or handwriting error or something, you know. Uh, so this is going to approach 10 divided by 0. Oh, no. Okay, and let me just tell you, if you get a 0 divided by 0 in this class, there's oftentimes something we can do. We can, like, look at the graph. We can do an algebraic cancellation. We can use the Tull's rule later on in the course. But if you get a non-zero number like 10 divided by 0, there's nothing you can do for that. And actually, that's evidence of a vertical asymptote. So that means that we are going to be either having positive infinity or negative infinity as our answer. Right? In this class, we can't just say it, D and E, throw up our hands and you know, be like, oh, can't find it. We can find you know, more, more than D and E. We can, say more. we can say whether it's going to infinity or negative infinity. So we know that there's a vertical asymptote going on here at x equals 2. So I'm going to just kind of draw it like that. And I'm going to just point off, you know, maybe that's x equals 2.1. Something very nearby to 2. I mean, there's definitely not going to be a sign change between 2 and 2.1 in numerator or denominator. I need to just figure out what is the sign of the numerator. In the... So 5 times 2.1 is a positive number. I feel like that's 10.5 divided by 2 minus 2.1 is definitely a negative number. So positive divided by negative is negative, and I'm approaching a vertical asymptote without sign changing, i got to assume. You know where the sign changes in the numerator and denominator are. And so I can conclude that this limit is negative infinity. You know, I can ask you limit questions. I can ask you horizontal asymptote questions. It's really the same thing, right? So determine if the function has any horizontal asymptotes. I'll start with this one. I'm going to say this one, no, it does not. Okay, it has no horizontal asymptotes. Maybe I'll just say this one has no horizontal asymptotes because it's bigger on top, x to the third versus x to the two. Okay. This one is bigger on bottom. So it's going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Okay. This one has got exponential and same power, so we're just going to have to be careful, right? So we're going to have to investigate 
the limit as x approaches infinity and the limit as x approaches negative infinity. So as x approaches infinity, what am I seeing? I'm seeing a 2 to the x in the numerator and a 5 to the x in the denominator. 5 to the x is faster than 2 to the x. So as a result, that limit is going to be 0. Makes it bigger on bottom. But as x approaches negative infinity, just like e to the x, 2 to the x and 5 to the x, as x goes to negative infinity, those things go away. They go towards 0. So what we'll be left with is an x to the third divided by a 4x to the third. And, well, that limit will be... One-fourth. Okay. And so since I have these limits, I've got horizontal asymptotes at y equals zero and y equals one-fourth. All right. Now this is a uh, that question that's just a little tricky, but you definitely need to be aware of it because it's pretty common in AP calculus. Uh, do you see the square root of x squared thing, especially, you know, square root of x squared versus x up in the numerator? You just need to recognize that this is a double horizontal asymptote scenario. This is the third of our three double horizontal asymptote scenarios. And you kind of just got to be aware, okay? I'm just going to tell you that the horizontal asymptotes are going to be y equals, okay, this is, they're essentially the same. We need to divide coefficients, right? Well, so that would be negative 4 over the square root of 25. Um, and also, I'm going to tell you that it's positive 4 over the square root of 25. And now, without getting into too much, uh, too much detail, and if you're interested and you want an algebraic explanation, you need to come see me because I've got one, I've got one ready for you. I just don't think, you know, I'm already at 27 minutes. I don't think that's going to be really a good use of my time, or your time, especially watching, to go through the algebraic manipulation here. So as x approaches infinity, g is the numerator's negative and the denominator's positive. Okay. And as x approaches negative infinity, g is positive divided by positive. Because you plug in a large negative number to 9 minus 4x, and you're going to get a positive number back. Whereas in the denominator, you square the number, you multiply it by 25, you subtract 6 of the number. It's going to Especially, you know, in the large negative number limiting case. Okay? So this is one where you kind of just have to recognize the pattern and say, oh, it's a double horizontal asymptote scenario, and just be ready. All right, another example here is telling me that it has asymptotes at y equals negative 3 and x equals 2. Well, if we're going to talk about y equals 3, be, negative 3 being an asymptote, that means the limit as x approaches infinity is negative 3. But it also means that the ratio of the leading coefficients is negative 3, right? Because I have an x squared in the top and an x squared in the bottom. So that means to me that a divided by 2 is equal to negative 3. So that tells me that A is negative 6. Okay. Now, in order to find B, I think you might suspect that you're going to need to use the x equals 2 asymptote, right? It stands to reason and use all the pieces of information. And we know that we get a vertical asymptote, and x equals 2 is a vertical asymptote. We get a vertical asymptote by division by 0. So that's going to be B plus 2x squared equals 0 when x is equal to 2, okay? So maybe I'll even write that in, at x equals 2. And then I'm going to plug in x equals 2. So b plus 2 times 2 squared is 4. And so b plus 8 equals 0. b is negative 8. Okay. So there you go. That's how we, uh, that's how we work that type of problem. This one's definitely on the homework and the quiz. And I feel like there's a, I've got a multiple choice question that's like that. So I might come back on the test too. It's very common, very common type of problem for this state of the course. All right, here's two more problems. I want you to work these on your own, to give these, give these your own shot um, and see what happens. Okay, what you're going to do, you're going to pause the video because I'm about to pause the recording and just write in the answers and then, because uh, they're just going to pop up, right, in about five seconds. All right, there you go. 
so you know the first one you plug in, you see that it's going to be a vertical asymptote. You plug in a point nearby, it's fine, it's positive. Okay, happy, right? Um, it's going to be positive infinity. The second one, this is a little different, some you haven't really seen. But what you want to do is you want to just look at the fraction, see what's happening to the fraction. Because we could, we're pretty good at this point at dealing with you know fractions. What's going to be the limit is x plus infinity of the fraction. Well, this is the type of fraction that its limit is going to be zero because it's bigger on the bottom, the x squared versus x to the first. So as x goes to infinity, I'm getting closer and closer to taking cosine of zero. And that makes sense. I mean, you can think, you know, we know what cosine of zero is. So that limit we can just kind of pass through to be cosine of zero, which is one. All right, now I'll start wrapping up. Oh, I've got double horizontal asymptotes. These are the things that we need to be aware of that cause a double horizontal asymptote. So it's it's like a mix of exponential and something else. But it, I guess it's got exponential and top and bottom. All right, we're just dealing with exponential. Because exponential has different behaviors as x approaches infinity and as x approaches negative infinity. That's really what causes a double horizontal asymptote. Okay. Then there is this, you know, like x divided by the square root of x squared, where it's, you know, essentially are the same or whatever. And, you know, x squared plus dot, dot, dot. And we just kind of got to recognize that pattern. You know, sometimes the square root goes in the numerator. Sometimes it's the square root of x to the fourth. You know, it's not always, you know, it could be the square root of x to the fourth in the denominator and x to the two and some other stuff in the numerator. Okay. They're essentially the same, but you just have to be careful about the positive and negative side. Then there's uh, also inverse tangent, right? Y equals inverse tangent of x. That has a double horizontal asymptote. These are kind of the three objects in AP calculus that you need to be aware of. Okay. Now this, what I'll just remind you, since you know we're all the way here, thirty minutes in, but you can spare me thirty more seconds, um, is that remember square root of x squared? That's like that's absolute value of x. So this is like kind of like x divided by the absolute value of x, which is the type of function that we've seen in this class. Um, which has distinctly two different behaviors as x approaches infinity and negative infinity. Exponential has very different behaviors as x approaches infinity and negative infinity. And then arctangent, well, I already drew the picture of that. You can draw your own conclusions. The last thing I got for you is something from, you know, the Taylor series unit. It's like the very end of Cal BC. And I think this is if you're just like really wanting to get after it and you want something extra, something to challenge you. I want you to try to compute this limit. Okay, pause the video. Okay, when you come back, is in five seconds, ten seconds from now, it's just going to pop up with the answer. All right, there you go. But if this was just like not to your, uh, not to your liking, don't worry. I'm not going to ask you any questions like these until, you know, Probably about spring break.